Today, we are going over the top 10 abandoned places in New York. There are hundreds, if not thousands of abandoned places in New York, so make sure you like if you wanna see a part two. Today, the list is going to start off easy and the spots are gonna get cooler and cooler as the list goes on. I must say this for legal reasons, but I do not recommend going to any of these places. Trespassing is illegal and you can be punished to the full extent of the law. With that being said, the first spot on our list is Overlook Mountain House Ruins in Woodstock. The former hotel's remains are near the summit of Overlook Mountain, which rises 3,100 feet over Woodstock. The ruins are what's left of a third building on the site. The first was built in the early 1800s, when New York's Hudson River Valley was the fashionable vacation spot for New York's elite. However, the Overlook Hotel suffered some disadvantages, which made for slow business. Train service to Woodstock was poor, and most travelers preferred more easily accessible hotels. Reports of rattlesnakes in the surrounding woods also may have scared others away. The Catskills' luxury heyday ended in the early 1900s, as their clientele moved on to trendier playgrounds, with resorts closing in the 1930s and 40s. The Overlook ruins are thus one of the only examples of these historic Catskills resorts left standing. Mohawk Furniture and Brattlebin. The old mill buildings are on a sprawling complex that is bordered by the Canado Creek. The site was originally occupied by the Brattlebin Knitting Company. The existing brick buildings were constructed after a fire destroyed the original four-story wood structures in 1905. Brattlebin has a history of massive fires. The downtown business district has been completely destroyed several times. The Mohawk operation included a number of drying kilns, indoor lumber storage, and a complete manufacturing and finishing operation. The company fell on hard times and the plant closed down in 2005. The owner had planned to sell the plant as a complete operation, but during one of the inspections, asbestos was discovered on the components of the heating system throughout the plant. Mohasco Power Plant in Amsterdam The Mohasco Powerhouse is a 102-year-old abandoned power generating facility. The powerhouse used water from the North Chuctanooga Creek to produce coal-fired steam that was piped to at least three carpet mills in the city. At the height of its economic prowess, Amsterdam's carpet mill industry employed one in six city residents. Two of the biggest companies, Mohawk Carpet Mills and Alexander Smith and Sons Inc. merged in 1956 to form Mohasco, which at the time was the biggest carpet manufacturer in the world and was named to the first ever Fortune 500 list. The powerhouse these days is an intriguing ruin. While the 200 foot smokestack was removed in 2006 because of instability, the solidly built three story structure is still an imposing presence straddling the North Chuctanooga Creek in a small vale adjacent to Forest Avenue. Buffalo Central Terminal in Buffalo. Opened in 1929 for the New York City Railroad, the Buffalo Central Terminal was every bit as grand and opulent as Manhattan's Grand Central Terminal. These were the days when Buffalo was known as the Queen City, built on the strength of automobiles, livestock, steel, and other heavy industries. Buffalo thrived to such extent it was chosen to host the prestigious 1901 Pan Americans World Fair. At this point, Buffalo was the eighth largest city in the United States. But the decline in Buffalo's economic fortunes and the rise of domestic airlines and automobiles spelled the end of the Grand Terminal. In the early hours of the morning of October 28, 1979, the last Lakeshore Limited train service heading west left Buffalo. The Grand Old Terminal was never used again. For decades, the building has been left abandoned, silently falling apart, while the surrounding neighborhood similarly declined. Pilgrim State Hospital in Brentwood. Built from 1931 to 1940 to alleviate overcrowding in nearby silence, Pilgrim State Hospital consisted of dozens of buildings on almost 2,000 acres of campus, capable of housing 12,500 patients, larger than many towns. Currently, it is still the largest psychiatric facility in the world, and in its heyday, one to 2,000 lobotomies were performed in the city for the insane. As the need for care dwindled, over 50 buildings were demolished in 2003, but a portion remained in active use, and several other buildings, including the medical surgical building, the workshops, and the power plant, had fallen to decay. Silver Creek High School in Silver Creek. The local school board purchased land for a junior and senior high school on Main Street in 1916, and construction of the new Silver Creek Junior Senior High School began in 1920. The new gymnasium opened to the public during a boys' basketball game on December 22, 1921, while the new school was finished until mid January 19. A much larger high school was built on the outskirts of Silver Creek in 1958, and the former building was repurposed for grades 3 through 6 until the 1970s, but the building has closed down since then and has been left to decay. Willard State Hospital in Willard Willard welcomed its first patient in 1869. The theme of horrific neglect would follow in patients admitted to, into Willard. One girl had been shackled in the cell since childhood. Another patient arrived at Willard in a chicken crate. The dreadful situations patients were arriving from, coupled with lack of understanding of mental disability, meant that Willard essentially became a dumping ground for undesirables. Patients' afflictions ranged from severe mental and physical handicaps to nervousness, chronic to acute insanity. Campus was divided between a woman's side and a men's side, with a violent end and a non-violent end. There was a bowling alley, a movie theater, a gymnasium, and patients took part in camp-like activities like sewing classes. It was still a hospital though, and there were entire buildings devoted to treatments like electroshock therapy, ice baths, as well as operating theaters and a morgue. 
A cemetery on the grounds features markers with numbers, no names, for the thousands of people buried there. After Geraldo Riviera's 1972 exposed on the deplorable conditions at Willowbrook Asylum, numbers in large institutions declined sharply. Willard Asylum discharged its final patient in 1995 and shuttered its doors for good. Kings Park Psychiatric Center in Kings Park Closed and abandoned since 1996, Kings Park Psychiatric Center stands as otherworldly relics situated in Nissaquoke River State Park in the hamlet of Kings Park, New York. Over the course of its 111 year history, Kings Park Psychiatric Center served as a nucleus of the surrounding community for generations. The town's local economy depended on its very existence. Residential development rose since the hospital offered local employment opportunities. And the idea of having a mental institution was not seen as a negative connotation, but rather a sense of civic pride. At the height of its operation in 1954, the hospital treated over 10,000 patients, making it the largest institution of its kind at the time. But with the advent of psychotropic drugs, the need for long-term treatment of the mentally ill had begun to phase out. Buildings on the grounds of King Park Psychiatric Center started to shut down or operate at a limited capacity. In November 1996, the last patients at Kings Park Psychiatric Center were transferred to the nearby Pilgrim State Psychiatric Center, and the hospital was shut down. Pines Resort in Fallsburg. The Pines Resort was constructed in 1933 in the Catskill region of New York, complete with 400 rooms, an ice skating rink, indoor and outdoor pools, a theater, nightclub, poker rooms, and more. The entire resort covered some 96 acres. Despite the lavish offerings, the resort was forced to close in 1998 due to financial problems. Now it stands abandoned with many of the ceilings collapsing due to immense water damage. Despite the rash of damages, most of the buildings are still standing. Rockland Psychiatric Center in Orangeburg. Rockland State Hospital was born in tragedy. After a 1924 fire at Wards Island where patients burned alive, Orangeburg, New York was selected as the site of a new facility to receive overcrowding in other psychiatric hospitals. Considered the best planned hospital in the world, Rockland State Hospital opened in 1931 and grew quickly. A 600 acre campus would go from treating 5,700 to over 9,000 patients. As with many state hospitals, many qualified personnel were drafted in World War II, leaving only untrained and sometimes dangerous staff available. Disease, abuse, and neglect flourished, and desperate measures to control the populace like hydrotherapy, lobotomies, and insulin shock treatment came and went. Eventually, the rise of psychotropic medications allowed to push for a deinstitutionalization to gain steam. By the 1970s, most of the patients had been discharged, and while there were still outpatient treatment facilities, most of the campus was abandoned. Renamed Rockland Psychiatric Center, a few of the unused buildings were reused, but most were left in ruins. Once said to be one of the largest intact psychiatric facilities in the United States, the Rockland State Hospital is no more. So those are the top 10 abandoned places in New York. As I said before, there are tons of locations in New York, so make sure you like if you want to see a part two. If you guys made it this far in the video, feel free to check out my vlog channel. This is where I bring you guys through real life experiences and bring you through my everyday life. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.